All right, everybody, here we are in the mountains of Judea at the edge of the Judean frontier. This is the outpost farm that we established uh, in the middle of Corona. And as you can see behind me here is the community Pnei Kedem. All the way behind me here at the top of the mountain right up there, that's the Arugot farm and that's our house of prayer. Below me down here is two big valleys that go up and down. So really for me to walk from here to there, if I were to go through these valleys, it would take me about a day uh, to get back to the Arugot farm. But I just wanted to show you what we've done up until now because as you can see behind me here, that's really where our outpost is. And it's pretty far down this road that we've paved from Pnei Kedem. But as you see right here, this is the water line. And it's a pipe that, you know, let's uh, just see if I can get, that's how big it is. Like my hand doesn't really even go around it. That's how thick it is. And it goes from here, really all the way up to Pnei Kedem. And then what is the water line for? Obviously it's to bring now water to our new little farm here but also what we've done in between our farm and Pnei Kedem is over the last year, we planted vines. And that was done by the Hevron Winery, because obviously we don't have the resources <laughs> to plant vineyards upon vineyards, but they do. And now that we've taken this land and we've made it productive, and as you can see behind me here with this water line, the vineyards are blossoming. Now it'll take three years until they can really produce according to the Torah law because the first three years we just let them grow and then in the third year we'll be able to start making wine in Hebron and so thank you to the Hebron winery for this Zionist endeavor and so here's the road that we've paved these are the vineyards that have now really connected from our outpost there now to Pnei Kedem, slowly but surely all of the land in between which is about I would say two to three kilometers um, is now being cultivated and brought back to life. The mountains of Judea are soon going to be dripping with grape juice. All right, I just wanted to show you like what these one-year-old grapevines look like. They're just now getting out of the ground. And like this is the season where they really start to blossom. And of course by Sukkot, that's when the harvest comes. But these grapevines are about a year old. And as you can see right here on the other side of the street, um, those are the grapevines to be. So we are reclaiming this land making the desert blossom. I'm going to lift up a drone here and you can see all the way from Pnei Kedem how we are slowly but surely restoring pride to the Judean mountains. So I've just gone now a little bit closer now uh, to our farm and I just wanted to show you this is the newest crop right here right behind me. So these are literally just like months old now these little grapevines here. They're so cute. <laughs> Look at them. So these were just now planted and then hopefully in three years from now. But as you can see now, this little new vineyard really goes all the way up to our outpost here behind me. It's like all a part of the same project. And um, that's how it's done. How we come to a barren reality in Israel. Because as you can see behind us here, it's just desert. Nothing was here. And nothing would be here had we not come back and restored this land. All right, hey guys. So here we are now, our pride and joy. Here's our tanker for diesel. Right here is the battery. It's a pretty big battery because we now have solar panels over here that were once again provided by a fellowship member from California and her friends that are just lovers of the land of Israel. And if you could imagine that just a few people gathering together are making such an impact on all of the land around us here that we have this ancient command, an ancient guidance to inherit the land, to cultivate the land, to make her blossom, to make her flourish. And here we are right behind me, two solar panel systems that are now powering our makeshift farm here in the Judean mountains. And we have the frontier ahead of us. And I think that the more we return to our land, the more we return to ourselves, the more we return toward who we're meant to be in the world. And that's not just a Jewish thing, that's a world thing. The world is going through a process now. The world is sick and the land of Israel is the medicine. It's the healing. And so here's our solar panels and let's go check out what else is going on out over here. 
So we had some problems here with the authorities in the beginning, but um, now we came here and this is brand new. This, what looks like an ancient ruin is really just a modern day place to catch some shade in the sun. Alan, la corée. So here now, look, one of the volunteers is here. And this is just an area to sort of sit and relax, let people find the shade. Here we have behind us our flock of sheep, as you would expect, is growing. And every day they're taking out and roaming out throughout the lands here, guarding and protecting the land of Israel. Our newest addition, we've of course brought two caravans here. One, two, and they're mobile caravans. We've already had to move them once. And then our newest acquisition is this bus <laughs> that we've now turned into a mobile home for the volunteers. And so slowly but surely, this place is coming to be. We have electricity, we have water, we have sheep, we have vines. And now let's check out our new bus, the magical Judean bus. So we're walking in right here and here we go. So this now has been turned into, as you can see, beds here, beds here, beds below here. It's like f a funky, amazing place that if you are a young Zionist and you want to make it happen, there's a shower, there's a bathroom, a compost toilet, a sink, and another bedroom in the back. And so if we have to move this one, well, it's a good thing it's a bus. And, um, and of course, an air conditioning now that we have electricity. And so our outpost is growing, the land is being developed, and I would say that here, mission accomplished. The Rujum we're still working on, we're having a lot of challenges there, but I guess life is filled with challenges, and our job, to overcome them. So, thank you for everything. Hi, my name is Jeremy Gimpel. A lot of people want to know exactly what the Land of Israel Fellowship is and what members receive when they join. So let me explain. The Land of Israel Fellowship is a global online community with hundreds of members from over 40 countries around the world. There are live sessions and gatherings that create a direct personal connection to the Land of Israel and to lovers of Israel from around the world. There's no online gathering that I'm familiar with that is connected to the Land of Israel that unites and brings together such a diverse group of people, backgrounds, and nationalities, it feels like prophecy. It feels like something we need in these times, like a window in to a better future on the horizon. There's a divine unity we experience every week in our fellowship broadcast. We heard these amazing teachings from an authentic Hebrew and Israel perspective and our jaws drop. Not only because they ring so true and are such a blessing, because they are so consistent with what we believe. These Sunday morning gatherings are nothing less than a house of prayer for all nations. Cindy Lowe, the United States of America. The Land of Israel Fellowship is an amazing resource for learning Torah, the Bible, and the prophets, unfiltered and uncentered directly from the Land of Israel. We've been studying Torah for almost 20 years, but we feel we are stepping into it more than ever and seeing new depth and dimensions to scripture. We're encouraged more and more every week. Callan Ardell, USA. Members receive access to all the archives in the library of teachings on every portion of the Torah, the biblical feast, Hebrew prayer, prophecy, sessions on the ancient wisdom of the prophets of Israel to help us navigate through these turbulent times. These sessions are so rich. I re-listen to each and truly each session is the best one yet. Tehillah is a tremendous asset and the teachings Ari shares are so rich. I've read the Bible so many times and I've known the things you are teaching. The Hebrew understanding is what Christians have missed for centuries. Sister Georgian from Germany. The Land of Israel Fellowship is truly unique because it's built upon personal relationships with the teachers of the fellowship. Myself, Rabbi Ari Abramowitz and Tehillah Gimpel. Every member has direct access to the staff 24 six via email or direct WhatsApp to ask questions, to comment, to connect directly to all the teachers. And over the last years, we've connected to some of the most beautiful people on the planet. 
So if you want to find out more and join the Land of Israel Fellowship, you can click on the link below. And if you want to try it out for just a month, you can email fellowship at thelandofisrael.com and we'll hook you up. I hope to see you. Shalom from the mountains of Judea.